Hello and welcome back to another episode of Five Minute Meta Sounds. What are they? Who are they? Who, what, when, where, why? How is probably the more important one. We're going to be looking at it pretty much from the ground up. So if you're already familiar with Meta Sounds, you might kind of be going over the basics again. But for those of you that have never touched it before, we think it's a little bit scary. Hopefully this will uh, give you the confidence to start doodling around with it so with that out of the way uh let's start with who is going to be using meta sounds well you are what is a meta sound well a meta sound if you're familiar with the old uh sound cue system in unreal it is basically a one-to-one -one replacement of that the next level up the upgrade it's end game shit. so when are you going to be using a meta sound well i would argue that once you know how to use it there's kind of no reason not to use a meta sound it's it's sort of appropriate for every sound audio use case where do you find it to make it uh it's in <laughs> it's in sounds meta sound source now as for where we actually call these sounds from where we kind of play them from from any actor, you can do this within a function, you can do it within the event graph, or from something like an anim notify during an animation, you can spawn sound at location, or you can spawn sound attached, or you can spawn sound 2D, which means, you know, we're playing it directly through the speakers rather than kind of placing it in the world. Uh, there are these other ones that are play sound. However, I don't like to use them because they don't have an object output pin. Whereas these ones here do have an object output pin. Um, they do have this initial params thing. It's a pain in the ass. What I prefer to do is just get the sound, you know, meta sound, whatever the meta sound type is. Then from here, we can, you know, we could set a reference to it. And from there, we can access anything, you know, set scalar or set float parameter. Blah, 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 blah. And when you're kind of using meta sounds to define the behavior of a sound, rather than, you know, the actual sound file itself, you will want to use this to set object parameter to actually send in the WAV file. And one final thing to note is you can actually add an audio component. Uh, it's something that actually exists in space. And you can set the sound over here, you know, meta sound, blah, 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 blah. And so it will be there when this actor is constructed. And you can also just grab a reference straight off of here. So if you're spawning like a projectile or something, and it's always going to have some, you know, arrow whooshing sound, uh, you might want to put this on that class. However, when you do do this, uh, you will need to hit play sound to actually start it. It won't be playing by default, I believe. Uh, and finally, how does it all work? So now that we've created one, we're going to call this tutorial meta sound. I don't know if I spelled that correctly or not. So this is the meta sound graph. You can see here we've got our trigger input uh, called on play. So this will get called when you play the sound. This is on finished. You can see it's got a warning. That's because nothing is hooked up to it yet. And this is the actual sound output. Everything needs to end up over here. Uh, you can see it's out mono because this will be a, a mono sound. 99% of your sounds are going to be in mono. Uh, the only things that would be in stereo are non-diegetic sounds. So uh, user interface sounds, you know, music that isn't in the world. Uh, like music that's playing, you know, inside the brain of your players. That will be in stereo. If you need it to be stereo, then you would just go to meta sound, output format, stereo. But we're going to be in mono for now. So the meat and potatoes of a meta sound is a wave player. Bam. Wave player, on play, play a sound, output of the audio to the output there. Unfinished to unfinished, bam, we're done. We, we've created 
a meta sound. And basically all this is going to do is play a sound, Blunt Impact 4, when we hit the play button. And then when it finishes, it will call the unfinished event, which this is through the interface for a, a one-shot sound, which means when this is called, it's going to kill that sound so it's no longer, um, you know, taking up any juice. So we can debug this by hitting play. How exciting. So now we're going to be taking a look at some specific examples of what Metasounds are actually capable of. But before we do, you're going to need some sound effects. And what better way to get the exact sound effects that you want than recording them yourself? Now, you're probably thinking, Charlie, I'm not, you know, a qualified, specialized, professional audio engineer like you are. Well, what if I told you that recording high quality audio is a skill? that has been shared by the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. I highly recommend checking out this class by Mike and Maddie, or well, it's Maddie in particular, which is about the basics of audio production. Statistically, you are probably a solo indie games developer. You're a bit of a, you know, a one person show. So take it from me when I say that recording and processing high quality audio is an extremely invaluable skill. So give yourself the gift of knowledge this holiday season by getting 50% off your Skillshare membership by using my link in the description. So a really common one from sound cues is pitch variation and also playing uh, sound variations. So for example, it's playing a random pitch, it's playing a random sample, There you go, some random variation. The super basics that were kind of there by default in sound cues. It's not very exciting. You're probably thinking, what the fuck? Like, what's the, what's the point of this shit? It just seems like more effort. Well, that's why I'm going to show you a few little examples of what Metasounds can be used for. All right, so a few cool things that you can do with Metasounds. Uh, one that I was experimenting with just earlier was actually changing the sound over distance using uh you can hook into the distance attenuation and spatialization interfaces you'll see it go bang cool and then if we move this all the way over to here and we look at it from afar you'll hear There's a tiny delay. And it's also that really echoey version of it. And so this is this is different from just attenuating the volume. It's also different from just attenuating, you know, the higher frequencies or something as it gets further away. We can actually change what the sound sample is. In reality, if lightning strikes way off in the distance, you hear like all of the you know, the reverberations of the thunder. So when we're dealing with sounds over distances, the sound actually changes and you might want to use a different sample. This is an example of that. So another example that I use Metasounds for is uh, with our weapon whooshes. So you can hear our weapon goes uh, But we're actually doing this procedurally using the speed of the weapon to drive the sound. Uh, even if I do a dodge roll, you can hear it. <laughs> whooshing and because our kind of combat system is very um it's got a lot of procedural additions to it if i turn around and attack you can see that the sound changes and it's you know it's accurate to the speed of the weapon now the sample itself that i'm using for that whoosh it's just literally me going into the microphone so if we hit play you can hear that nothing's happening that's because we're at a value of zero or a speed of zero which means this is going to be zero which means we're not going to get any sound uh, however as we start to go past 800 we start to get some noise and the further up we go
anyway, so that's essentially how that works. So the last few examples that, you know, meta sounds can be pretty useful for is just modifying sounds uh, in unique ways. So for example, you know, when we hit this door, the sword goes clack. It's very, you know, uh, a very sharp sound. But if we hit the ground, you can hear that it's kind of softened. And we just use, you know, some envelope filters for that. And then you also can just uh, set up some pretty complex behavior with a single variable. So for example, uh, this door only has a speed variable being fed into the meta sound, um, but it has, you know, a bunch of volume attenuations. It has like a procedural creaking sound, um, and then that can crossfade into uh, like a looping door squeaking sample, which then also has its pitch altering as the speed increases. Uh, so for example, sounds like a cow. It does, doesn't it? Anyway, that's uh, that, that's another example of some pretty complex behavior that just gets driven from one variable. Now, you're probably thinking, Charlie, why haven't you covered, you know, all of that fancy shit that they showed, like, in the in the Unreal streams, where it's, like, you know, procedural music and all of this crazy, you know, synthesizer-esque stuff. Honestly, I don't find that side of meta sounds very uh, compelling. Uh, you know, I, I am a musician, and... It, it still seems a little bit novel. I'm yet to see the, I guess, value in it um, for, you know, obviously some projects will find that extremely useful, but for the majority of projects, it kind of seems like a bit of a novelty. I think it's I think it's good to get excited about that kind of stuff, um, but in practice, fully procedural music isn't going to be good. <laughs> However, we will look at interesting ways to implement written music using meta sound. So things like layering music um, and also thinking about, you know, how we can structure our music in order to work with meta sounds. And that, that'll be kind of something that we touch on in most of the videos is using meta sounds and this kind of, you know, like audio shaders style of doing audio it kind of turns the traditional you know sound effects mentality on its head because you don't have to record you know a billion different variations of the same sound effect like for example in our project we don't need to record you know sword hitting wood sword hitting grass sword hitting sand sword hitting stone all of that stuff we just do alterations Procedurally, I think even if you're not a sound designer um, or, or an audio engineer or a Foley artist or whatever, if you're just a coder in your project, it's still definitely worth learning this kind of stuff because you can then pass that information on to your sound people and come up with some interesting ideas. And, you know, in the long run, it just makes things a lot more simpler uh, and it will save a lot of time because, you know, you can essentially create sounds on the fly instead of needing to go and render out a bunch of different variations and shit. Anyway, rant complete. As always, if you found this educational or entertaining, make sure you press the subscribe button, uh, like the video. If you've got any questions already, then chuck them in the comments or you can chuck them in our Discord, which is an official Discord partners server. Uh, link in the Schmeeble Deeble. Lastly, but not leastly, I want to thank the the Patri Patreons, Patrons. I've done a little Patreon overhaul as of late, uh, so it's going to be pretty banging. But thanks to all the existing patrons, you guys are pretty cool. If you do want to support the channel monetarily, you can do so for as little as one dollar per month in the description. Thanks to all the the Twitch people that have been hanging out with me while I record these videos. Uh, you guys are also. Pretty, uh, what would Twitch say? Pog? Pretty quite pog. Uh, I guess with that, we say goodbye. 
Goodbye.